in cruise vacation. And this morning on today's travel, volunteer vacations. As you plan out your year ahead, you may already be thinking about your vacation for next summer. Well, today's travel editor, Peter Greenberg, is here with the first of his week-long look at a very interesting alternative. Peter, good morning. Nice to see you. Good morning, man. It's not only an interesting alternative, it's a fulfilling one as well. In fact, if you're thinking about vacations, especially one of your most recent vacations, well, the words pool and beach and margarita might just figure prominently in your vocabulary. But now, try substituting these words with work, toil, sweat, and, oh yes, satisfaction. It's 4.30 in the morning. Phil Hiller and Anna Faherty crawl out of bed, get dressed, and prepare for their five-mile pre-dawn trek. Hard to believe, but this is their vacation. Anna and Phil are Earthwatch volunteers. They've come down to the Pacific coast of Costa Rica along with seven other volunteers to study, monitor, and help save giant leatherback sea turtles from extinction. Phil is a retired biology teacher. Nice morning, at least. I, I won't need the park, all right. Anna publishes business textbooks in Hampshire, England. Her friends know but can't fathom why she'd want to spend her time off like this. I think some of them think I'm a bit mad, and they'll think I'm more mad when I tell them I've walked the beach at 5 o'clock in the morning. Doris and Lewis Carson's friends also think they're a bit kooky. Most of them our age think we're out of our minds. They really do. One man, I still remember him, he, he looked at me and he shook his head and he said, you mean you paid to go do that? And I said, sure, it was great. The Carsons, married 52 years, have been doing volunteer vacations like this one for nearly 20 years. But it's an enjoyable way to be together. This thing of going out and playing golf or going out and fishing just doesn't appeal to me. I would rather be doing things together somewhere. Uh, our children have left home. We find it uh, much more interesting to visit a country and to get to know people and to do something that's of help. Helping includes working hard. During the day, the volunteers labor in the hatchery. But the real work comes late at night, when the leatherbacks come ashore to lay their eggs. Kind of a holy experience to be with a, a reptile that's been around for so long. Oh, it's huge. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, it's that broad and this long. Uh, there's no moving her. She, she does what she wants to do. I just would love to have them still be here when my grandchildren are old enough. At 20 million years old, the giant leatherbacks are the world's largest reptiles. But beach development, fishing practices, and egg poaching are killing them off. In 1980, there were 100,000 egg-laying females. Today, fewer than 1,500. Using infrared lights allowed us to see the animals at night without disturbing their nesting habits. That's the left flipper tag. Frank Palladino is one of the scientists in charge of this sea turtle project. The goal is to preserve the eggs until they're hatched, and then the baby turtles are released back into the ocean. And here it is, almost 1 o'clock in the morning, in the middle of a beach in Costa Rica, and we're out here watching a turtle lay 60 eggs at a time. It's, it's amazing. It is, and every time I see it, even though I've seen it thousands of times, I'm also impressed and very awed myself. When a volunteer comes out here, what do they experience? Most of them go away very awe-inspired. These animals are very majestic. Uh, being out here at night under the stars and seeing something that's truly prehistoric is pretty impressive. And they go away feeling very self-satisfied that they've helped. The long hours, the lack of sleep, and yes, the mosquitoes, the volunteers say it has all been worth it. Remember Anna walking the beach in the wee hours of the morning? Well, it's almost 24 hours later, and she's still on that beach, and it's the night before her vacation ends. What has this experience been for you? Uh, a completely different kind of holiday. Um, not really a holiday at all in terms of what I'm doing with my time, but a real uh, getaway from things at home and chance to be completely absorbed in something completely different. That's unbelievable. How physically active should someone be before they tackle a vacation like that? 
You can be as physically active as you want to be because some people want to get out there and really walk the beach and work with the turtles. Others want to stay back at the hatchery and just catalog and, and basically you know, chronicle what's going on. Now, you're paying, though, to do oh, this. Yes. So, so what are, what's the typical cost of this kind of vacation? For a two-week trip with Earthwatch, the average donation is about $1,800. It's a little pricey. However, the good news is that for most people, it's tax deductible. And you mentioned Earthwatch as this one organization. Sure. What kinds of other vacations do they offer? Well, you can go actually and work with the, the dolphins in New Zealand, with the sea otters in, in uh, Chile, or with the, uh, the, the birds in the forest in Ecuador. It's your hands-on as much as you want to be. And believe me, even the people who don't go down there to be hands-on, within a day, they're hands-on. And are there other organizations similar to Earthwatch? We have a lot of them. Uh, they're, they're wilderness volunteers. There's, uh, there's a, a great organization called the, we've got them right there, I think. Uh, the, Passport uh, in Time. Passport in Time, which works with a lot of restoration in terms of the park service. The American Hiking Society, which restores the trails. Uh, you've got a situation there with Puerto Rican Animal Welfare Society. I have, I have information on that firsthand. My sister went down there on vacation, actually adopted a dog that was destined to be dead, I mean, and brought it back and is living very nicely in Boston now. That's, that's a yeah. great story. Now, yeah. you, tomorrow you're going to have the story of a flight attendant who started an organization to help children. It's a group called Airline Ambassadors. These people are amazing. They do missions every week some, somewhere in the world to help kids who really need help. All right. Week-long series. Peter Greenberg, good to have you here. Yeah. Thanks. And to find out more about volunteer vacations, you can check out our website at today.msnbc.com. Up next...